I'm about to change the uh, brake fluid. But before I do so, I want to educate you a little bit here. Always use dot four or whatever your owner's manual is asking for. You can see on the covers up here, it says use dot four. Now in this case, I can use 5.1 because this is compatible with dot four. This one has a higher boiling point. However, do not use dot five. That's, um, it won't mix with dot four. You're gonna have to flush the entire system if you do so. So I'm gonna go with this guy here. I'm also gonna use these new caps. And then these two guys are optional here. This one man bleeder and a suction bushalanga thingy. I'm gonna have the links in the description from Amazon. And for the clutch, in this case, it uses a uh, brake fluid, but some motorcycles, they use some um, hydraulic oil, like the Husky. This is what it used for the clutch. So check your manual or the caps, and you should do this service every two years. That's what the manual says. All motorcycles and cars, it's every two years. This is uh, the front brake. You can see a little bit in there. It is uh, still kind of clear, but it's starting to have like a yellow dark color. But check out the clutch, it's like really dark, you can't see in there. It's like pitch black. So that fluid is really nasty. And one other thing, if you have a, a brake fluid container open for quite some while, you shouldn't use it, because um, once it's open, it attracts moisture. So that's not good, you always have to use a sealed brake fluid container. And it also tells you here, use brake fluid from a sealed container. And this is pretty similar procedure with all bikes, but on the Hayabusa it's gonna be a little different. For example, to get at the rear reservoir, you gotta remove this cowling, this piece back here completely. On other bikes, it's like right here, much easier. But of course I had to have the hard one. And also for the clutch on the Hayabusa, I removed the cover on this side to have access to the clutch bleeder right here. If you want, you can um, loosen the fairing on this side and flop it on the side, you can do that. But I'm gonna be doing more work on the bike. That's why I removed it completely. And I wanted to inspect it. Good thing I, I did remove it completely because see the screw, it got loose here for the, for the frame sliders. It got loose, so I'm gonna put some Loctite in this one and uh, make it tight. And another thing, I would like to show you here is when I remove the frame sliders, I made a mark so I know exactly how it went. So there's no guessing later on. Okay, enough with the talking. I'm gonna jump right into it now. Okay, first steps first, I'm gonna loosen this cap here. Now that it's loose, you're gonna wanna put something around it. So if brake fluid spills, that's gonna prevent it if it goes on the plastics because uh, brake fluid is corrosive. It can remove paint or make your paint dull or whatever. I happen to have a sock here in stock. You can use uh, your old underpants or a tanga, whatever you got. And I'm also gonna put my old sweatshirt over here. T-shirt, whatever it was, as an extra backup. And let's say if you do spill uh, this stuff on your plastics or uh, whatever on your wheels, water dissolves it really good. Uh, try to do as quick as possible, but of course, do not get water inside the brake system. Okay, now I'm gonna take note of the level of the brake fluid. I'm gonna put it kind of in the same spot because the thing is the brake pads are like halfway worn. So if I fill it to the maximum and then later on I change the, the brake pads, the fluid lever is gonna go all the way up and it might spill out. So if you have to do pads, I suggest you do the pads first and then you do the brake fluid. Now what you can do here is you can uh, use a syringe to suck out most of the brake fluid that's in here, the dirty one. So you have um, a head start with a clean fluid. But sometimes when you do that, um, it still kind of drips from the syringe. So I won't do that now. The bleeder. And of course, manage to put it in the dumbest spot ever. You see it back here. So I'm gonna start with um, the left side first. Always start from the furthest and work your way closer to the, even on a car, that's how you do it, to do it correctly. I gotta remove the cover. 
the rubber cap like that okay now there's two ways you can do this one you can do it the old school way clear tube put on the bleeder and you start pumping this and that's gonna start bleeding it the other way is you can use a, a vacuum bleeder you hook up the hose there and you start pumping it and that sucks out the brake fluid okay, before I put the tube on I'm gonna break this free with a size 8 okay and as you see I put another piece of uh, vracolastico here to prevent any brake fluid uh, from going on the wheel okay now I'm gonna loosen the bleeder and we're gonna start sucking Oh yeah, look at that. Always maintain a proper level. Never let it go dry because it's gonna suck in air and then you have to start over again to bleed out the air. Okay guys, I got some old brake fluid out from this side of the caliper. Just gonna make it tight now. It's only a, an eight millimeter, so don't go too crazy. And don't forget put the rubber cap. On this side, I'm gonna do the old school way. Just with a, a clear tube and a little container and, and I'm gonna be pumping the lever. Loosen the bleeder. And you only loosen it a little bit. Don't loosen it too much because if you go too much, it's, it's gonna be sucking air from the threads of the bleeder. So you have to do it just enough to make the fluid come out. That's all. I'm gonna start pumping it. And like I said, always keep an eye on the fluid level. I'm liking the old school way better. Look how quick it does it. It's coming up pretty clear, so I'm gonna say that's good now. It doesn't seem that dirty anyways, but it's two years, so that's why I'm doing it. Okay, same thing now. I'm gonna make this tight. Carefully remove the hose. There's gonna be a little brake fluid, so I'm gonna use my old underwears and pop it out of the way. See, even old underwears, you have a use for them gonna give the bleeder a wipe because there is a little fluid here and put the cap on okay now wiped as much as I could from around the bleeder there is gonna be a small amount around it I'm gonna spray some water because at night when I'm sleeping I can see that fluid dripping down on the wheel and stuff like that so I got water I put water in here I'm just gonna spray that bleeder with some water and the same thing for this one here it's kind of dark to see but I'm scoring the bleeder okay guys now it's time to check the level one more time I'm just gonna do a little bit more and now I'm gonna put the new caps on I'm gonna wipe the surface carefully you don't want it. wow look at that okay now I'm gonna put the rubber thingy back in and then this plastic on top and finally the cover and what I like with this one is they give you an allen bolt I don't know why the Japanese they still use a Phillips this is so stupid because uh, the strip's so easy I understand like uh, 80 years ago when they were making motorcycles they didn't have much experience maybe but in the year 2020, they're still using this. Okay, here we go. In, in, hon, hon. In, in, hon, hon. Damn, look at that. What an improvement, eh? Just a little tiny, it's, um, they're tiny screws. It doesn't have to be crazy tight because you have that rubber in between sealing it nice don't forget 
just like that a little bit nothing crazy I'm gonna take off my old sock and then around you can see it has like a little moist that's um what was squished in between wipe that with a wet raggy because again when I'm sleeping at night that thing could um drip down and cause some um discomfort to the bike you know and I can see the level right here this is a, the lower it should never be below that level so I'm good I'm above that not too full that's perfect right there and don't forget my brake pads are like half worn so when it's time to do the brake pads I'm gonna have some buffer room in here okay and I'm gonna do the same thing on the clutch and shout out to the lone wolf because he suggested to do this video and I have it tilted just to loosen these two screws once I break them free I'm gonna go like this because if I leave it this way and I remove the cap it could spill out the brake fluid could spill out here because it's on an angle and then I'm gonna put the sock back on okay guys you can see how much darker this clutch fluid is I guess because I was using the clutch way more, um, higher temperatures, more wear. I got the sock in place in the tanga here, the vracolastico. <laughs> <laughs> Coming down to the clutch slave cylinder here. Take off the cap, loosen the bleeder. <clears throat> and I'm gonna pump the clutch. Oh, look at that fluid, it's like nasty. Look at that. Damn, yo. If you can see well, there's like some, like soft debris. So I'm gonna use that syringe to suck up uh, as much of that stuff I can. Yeah, so check this out guys, all that nasty stuff is sitting in that corner. And when I put the brake fluid, it kind of like upsets it and surfaces I'm gonna suck as much as I can with the syringe okay broskis it's finally clean I pumped out some more fluid from the bleeder there came out nice and clean I'm gonna rinse this off again because when I'm sleeping that stuff can drip down and now I'm gonna Clean this up really carefully without dropping crap in there. It's amazing, look how dirty that surface is. It's almost more wise to do, wipe it first and then do the bleed job. If anything goes in there, you can suck it out with a syringe. Because you're going to suck out stuff anyways. I like to be educated, but I'm so frustrated. Hello to my love. Okay guys, finally got the covers on. It looks uh, like a nice little upgrade improvement. It's pretty clean now. I can see in there. I can see inside there now. Before I couldn't. Okay, that's how you do that. Um, the back one, like I said, you have to take the cowling off. That's gonna be a uh, next episode because on the next episode, I'm gonna change this tail light. I'm gonna put a clear one. So I have to remove that anyways, so that's going to be a two for one deal on that video. And when you're done, look around the bike, make sure you didn't drip any brake fluid. It would be wiser before you start to put a, a rag on the gas tank. Don't be silly like me. And I'm going to leave my Vracolastica here overnight or until I use a bike next time or whatever. If there's any fluid here and it's about to drip, there's going to be something. What I observed today, a good tip is when you do the clutch or, or even the brake, if it's really dirty, go on those corners first and suck it out with a, with a syringe. Suck out that nasty, that really nasty fluid first. Do that. And then this one, I can't say like, oh my God, it was a big help. Actually, I think it was a little bit harder with this the old school method was the best so all you really need is that tube and the syringe and i'm gonna have all the links in the description 
it would be helpful if you do use those links to get the stuff you need this way i get a percentage a very small one because i'm doing everything on my own dala here all right that's gonna be that and i'll see you guys in the next episode i told you it's gonna be that rear tail light back there and see you then